Lord has to say about the book of 2 Kings chapter 9. Before we get started into that, we'll go ahead and get started into prayer. Come Lord Jesus, we invite you into this video today to speak through me everything you want us to know. Give us spiritual eyes to see the things you want us to see, spiritual ears to hear the words that are spoken today, a spiritual heart to be open and able to receive all that you have for us, Father. Give us wisdom, knowledge, discernment, and understanding about what we're about to read, watch, and listen to as we put on the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, feet of readiness, shield of faith, sword of the Spirit. If there's anyone we need to be praying for, speaking encouraging words to, and or listening to, just show us that person. We pray that you heal our bodies, minds, and spirits. Take away any and all distractions away from us so we can focus on you. We pray against any attacks of the enemy over this video, this channel, us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world. We pray against, we pray for godly and divine wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to make the right choices and decisions today not only for the betterment of us, but others as well today, Father. We pray for God's blessings over this video, this channel, us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world. We pray for God's favor over this video, this channel, us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world. We pray that you guard and protect us as we're traveling to and from different locations. Just drive for us. Protect our vehicles from other vehicles and their vehicles from ours and protect animals from us and us from animals and send down our guardian angels to protect us. We thank you for them. Give them and us the rest and restoration we both need to do the work you've called us to do. And just work for us, in us, and through us today. Protect us from other people and protect other people from us. And we pray Psalm 51 and 91 over us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world. We pray that you send down the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth today. We plead the blood of Jesus and pray over us and our loved ones today. And we pray for the safety of our cities and the people in them. We pray that you show mercy on us and heal our land. We come to you in repentance, Father God, and ask that you forgive us of each and every sin, whether it be in word, thought, and or deed that we've committed against you, ourselves, and or others, as we forgive those who've sinned against us. We pray for our enemies and anyone listening today who has not yet accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior and would like to do so now. We pray John 3.16 over you. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So if you prayed that prayer with me today, you can know that you're going to go to heaven someday with the rest of the people that accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. For it's not by works so that no man shall boast. And there's not enough good works that any of us can do to earn our way to heaven. It's only through that perfect sinless life that was Jesus being born, died, buried and rising again for our sins and the sins of the world that any of us get to go to heaven. So Father God, we thank you for this person that accepted you as their Lord and Savior today. Help them in their daily walk and relationship with you to get into prayer with you each and every day. That's just talking to you like we're doing now, listening for your voice and obeying what you tell us to do. And help them to get into your word each and every day which is the Bible and stands for basic instructions before leaving earth so they can discern between the truth and the lies and the truth will set them free. Show them the gifts and talents that you've given them and how to use them for your glory to help those around them that are in need. It's a God divine appointment that you're here today. God brought you to this channel because he wants to re relationship with you and wants you to go to heaven someday and spend eternity with him because he loves you that much. He wants to be your best friend, to confide in him in each and everything. And I thank you for them, Father God, and everyone listening today. In Jesus' mighty name, and all God's people said, Amen. 
All right, let's go ahead and get started into what the Lord has to say about the book of 2 Kings chapter 9. So if you have your Bibles and you'd like to follow along, go ahead and turn them to the book of 2 Kings chapter 9 and we'll get started. Thank you. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Gird up thy loins and take the box of oil in thine hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. And when thou comest thither, look out there Ahio, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and tarry not. So the young man, even the young man, the prophet, went to remote Gilead. And when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting, and he said, I have an errand to thee, O captain. And Yehu said, Unto which of all of us? And he said, To thee, O captain. And he arose and went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over the people of the Lord, even over Israel. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab, thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha the son of Ahiah, and the dog shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. Then Jehu came forth to the servants of his Lord, and one said unto him, Is all well? Wherefore came this mad fellow to thee? And he said unto them, Ye know the man and his communication. And they said, It is false, tell us now. And he said, Thus and thus spake he to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then they hasted and took every man his garment and put it under him on the top of the stairs and blew with trumpets, saying, Yehu is king. So Yehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, conspired against Yoram. Now Yoram had kept remote Gilead and he and all Israel because of Haziel, king of Syria. But King Yeram was returned to be healed in Yezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him when he fought with Haziah, king of Syria. And Yehu said, If it be your minds, then let none go forth nor escape out of the city to go tell it in Yezreel. So Yehu rode in a chariot and went to Yezreel, for Yoram lay there, and Haziah, king of Judah, was come down to see Yoram. And there stood a watchman on the tower in Yezreel, and he spied the company of Yehu as he came and said, I see a company. And Yoram said, Take an horseman and send to meet them, and let him say, Is it peace? So there went one on horseback to meet him and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Yehu said, What hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, The messenger came to them, but he cometh not again. Then he sent out a second on horseback, which came to them and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Yehu answered, What hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, He came even unto them, and cometh not again. And the driving is like the driving of Yehu, the son of Nimshi, for he driveth furiously. And Yoram said, Make ready. And his chariot was made ready. And Yoram, king of Israel, and Ahihah, king of Judah, went out, each in his chariot, and they went out against Jehu, and met him in the portion of Naboth, the Jezreelite. And it came to pass, when Yoram saw Jehu, that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother, Jezebel, and her witchcrafts are so many? And Yeram turned his hands and fled, and said to Ahiza, There is treachery, O Ahaziah. 
And Yehu drew a bow with his full strength and smote Yehuram between his arms. And the arrow went out at his heart, and he sunk down in his chariot. Then said Yehu to Bikar, his captain, Take up and cast him in the portion of the field of Naboth, the Yezreelite. For remember how that, when I and thou rode together after Ahab, his father, the Lord laid this burden upon him. Surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his son, saith the Lord, and I will requit thee in this plot, saith the Lord. Now therefore take and cast him into the plot of ground, according to the word of the Lord. But when Ahizad, the king of Judah, saw this, he fled by the way of the garden house, and Yehu followed after him and said, Smite him also in the chariot. And they did so at the going up to Gor, which is by Ebliam. And he fled to Megiddo and died there. And his servants carried him in a chariot to Jerusalem and buried him in his sculpture with his fathers in the city of David. And in the eleventh year of Yeram, the son of Ahab began Isaiah to reign over Judah. And when Yehu was come to Yezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face and tired her head and looked out at a window. And as Jehu entered in at the gate, she said, Had Zimri peace who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he trod her underfoot. And when she was come in, he did eat and drink, and said, Go, see now this cursed woman, and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull, and the feet, and the palms of her hands. Wherefore they came again, and told him, And he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servant Elijah, the Tishbite, saying, and the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, This is Jezebel. And that was the end of what the Lord has to say about the book of Second Kings chapter 9. Hope you all enjoyed and were blessed by it. Till next time. Bye.